Yo, yeah, Auto Tech. We got our Rav4 in the shop today. We're going to be showing you how to do a front uh, brake job on this vehicle, both pads and rotors. All right, stay tuned. All right, first thing we need to do is get the vehicle jacked up in there a little bit. Um, so we're going to need quality jack stands. I've got one on this side of the vehicle here and one on the other side, and then we need a jack to actually lift the vehicle in there. Uh, make sure that the parking brake is set and the rear wheels are chalked. Now we're just chalking the rear wheels. And we're just going to set the e-brake. Nice and tight. Now we need to get in front of the vehicle and lift it from a secure lifting point. From the front of the frame, you can use the side rail as well. Now before you go ahead and lift the vehicle all the way off the ground, just lift it a good amount and then we're going to start loosening up these lug nuts. And we're just going to break them loose. And then the last lug nut here has a key insert. So we need to get that key insert and we'll be able to use that to unlock the, the lug nut there to get the tire. And here's the locking lug that we're talking about. Corresponds to the lug Which on is the shown wheel. right there. As you can see the difference between the two. We need to remove that last one and loosen and it stick up. Stick it on the tire. Get the key inserted in the slot. This side's loose. We can loosen the other side in the same way and then lift the vehicle all the way up, get it on stands. Now that the vehicle's lifted off the ground, we gotta get our jack stands in place. So we can lower the vehicle onto them so we have a safe place to be. And we're gonna find a spot right on the frame of the car. We wanna get both sides at approximately the same height, so we'll do this on the other side as well. Now that we got the stands where we want them, we're gonna slowly lower the vehicle down onto the stands. Everything's lined up, and for safe measures, I like to keep my hydraulic track uh, pressure underneath the vehicle just as a third safety. Now we can go ahead and remove these tires. Last but not least, remove the key lock lug as well. And this tire is ready to come off. Set it aside for later. As you can see, we now have access to the brake pads and the rotor. Um, obviously, anyone who's going to be changing their brakes um, understands the concept of the, the brake pads, caliper, and the rotor. When you squeeze the pedal down, you're applying hydraulic pressure to the, uh, the caliper piston, which compresses the brake pads and smashes against this brake rotor here and that helps to slow the vehicle down to a stop. We're gonna to need to replace the pads on this vehicle and the rotors. So the first thing that we need to do is get the rear caliper bolts off to remove the caliper assembly and hang it from the suspension so that the lines don't get kinked or, uh, or ripped, torn, whatever you wanna say. Before I even decide to pull these calipers off, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna go around the edge of the rotor here with a little bit of PB uh, blaster bolt penetrant and go around this area because this rotor looks like it's been rusted on in place pretty good. So this isn't going to want to free float off as easy as a lot of other cars. We might have to hammer it off or uh, use a puller to take it off. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on both sides before I even decide to touch the caliper. Let that sit in there, soak up, uh, absorb some of, the, some of the gunk and crud that's in there, and hopefully help break the rust loose. All right, my colleague Tim here is going to be removing the two rear caliper bolts to hold the caliper over the brake disc. And these are pretty tight, so get a good size wrench to pull these off. Once you get this loose, you're going to need to elevate the caliper and keep it out of the way so that your brake lines don't get snagged anywhere. Um, using a coat hanger works well for this job.
Alright, the caliper's now loose, and we're just gonna hang it on the suspension right here. Anywhere you can keep it elevated will work fine. Now we need to pull off this old rusty rotor, and to do that, we need to hook up our polar set to pull it off. Alright, we got the polar set put on. <laughs> All right, now for this part, we gotta keep the rotor from turning. So I'm gonna be using a pry bar to hold it in place while my colleague here tightens up on the puller. What this essentially is going to do is to pull the rotor out towards us. All right, and it's off. years worth of rust kept the rotor stuck on here on this hub assembly so what we're going to do is before we uh, put this back on is we're going to take a wire wheel and clean that hub up a little bit to ensure that we don't get any squealing from the brakes. Right, so all we're going to do here is we're going to spray some brake clean on this hub and we'll take a wire wheel to it and just kind of get all the rust and all the road debris. Scotch brighter or wire wheel would be the best to use on this job but this will work just as good. Just to help remove any surface stains. All right, so now what we want to do once we've cleaned up that hub a bit is we want to get the caliper and we want to compress the piston inside of it. So there's two methods you can use. Um, you can use a normal C-clamp we have here something like this c-clamp or you can use a tool like this which is actually meant for brakes we'll show you how to use these all right so we've just pulled the pad out on this side just to show you how we're going to compress that piston what we're going to do is we're going to take our old brake pad and we're going to set it up against the piston what we're going to use is this special tool here that's going to line up with the brake pad and it's going to force the piston inward so that when we put the new the new rotors and the new pads in everything will be able to sit flush all right we're going to use this specialty tool now to compress the piston all right nope it's got a back plate that's good it's going to kind of pop the clip as you can see we're pushing the piston in slowly with this movement here We need to clean our new brake rotor off before we put it on the vehicle. So we're going to take a little bit of brake clean, we're going to spray it on the rotor, and then we're going to clean it off with a dry rag. Make sure to be wearing a clean new set of gloves. Do not contaminate your brand new rotor. And also keep in mind that not all rotors can be clean like this. Uh, there's a lot of newer style rotors that have a uh, break-in material that will actually come off with brake clean. So make sure to uh, know the difference between these types of rotors. Typically, if your rotor is shiny, it's not going to have that break-in uh, surface material. Uh, it's usually like a dull or gray color, so just keep that in mind when you're cleaning your new We've got rotors. a nice anti-seize compound here that we're going to be using. We're going to put a little smidge of it on the inside of the hub just to allow it to, uh, to not rust over over the years. And all we need is just a little dab of it around the outside surface. We're going to smear that on with our fingers, which I'll do since yours are clean. Just get it around the outside a tad bit. We're going to wash off the, the amount there. And then I like to get a little bit on the hub. Go, man. One thing we always like to do is just throw a lock nut on there, just so you can send your caliper back over once you're all done. Just helps to keep the rotor in place. That's good. All right, so what we have here is one of our newer brake pads. Um, what we're going to want to do with this anti-seize is we're going to want to apply it on the back here of the shim and on the sides where it contacts the actual caliper. What this is going to help do is it's going to help eliminate the, uh, the pad from catching in any way 
and from vibrating on the back, which will cause your vehicle to squeal. So that's what. This is like the worst pad to ever show it on because it's got the gray shim and the anti-seize is gray. But you viewers get the point. And then he's getting the sides as well where it contacts the caliper. Notice the fresh set of gloves. Yes, gloves. Keep those pads clean. And whatever you do, do not get this on the mating surface of the pad. All right, so we're showing the caliper here. Um, we've taken our old retaining clips and we've cleaned them up with a bit of Scotch-Brite since we didn't get new clips with our brake pads. It is suggested that you get new uh, clips with your pads, um, but this set didn't come with them, so we just reused and cleaned up the old ones. Now that we have the brake pads covered in anisees, we're going to slot them into the rotor, or we're going to slot them into the caliper and line that up with the rotor. Bango. Alright, now we can install the outer side. Alright, now that we have the pads installed, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the rotor surface is clean again. And then we're going to install the uh, caliper onto the rotor and bolt it all up. Once you get the caliper lined up, now you just gotta screw those bolts back in in the back of the caliper onto the suspension assembly. Now that we got the caliper back on, all we had to do was bolt the tire back up and torque everything to spec. Last thing you want to do is look under the hood and make sure your master cylinder is not overflowing with brake fluid. It's been another video from Anthony at DIY.